This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 591 with guest Aaron Lawrence, recorded on November 16, 2023. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home news, reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the AverageGuy.tv studios here in a beautiful Bellevue, Nebraska, although we can use a little rain. Aaron, has the have the fire stopped up in Canada? Are you guys still... It, are you guys okay? It, are you okay? It, <laughs> it stopped burning just in time for it to start snowing. So okay. we've had... We just got our second snowfall of the year last night. Oh, and thank goodness. Minimal this time, but uh, yeah, like we were saying, trade-offs. Yeah, are you? But are they out? Are the are most of the fires out up there? Or are I think still some most of them were out oh. by about mid to end of August. It seemed okay. to to quiet down quite a bit, but uh, it was a really it was a really dry yeah. year. Oh, terrible so. fire season for you guys. I mean, terrible. Mm. We're glad it's over for now. Hopefully, we'll not repeat that again next year, right? I mean, we we'll Canada see what can... the year brings between oh. the atmospheric river or the. Pineapple Express and the, <laughs> all all those weather systems that push El Nino, the weather up. And El, El Nino, Nino, La Nina. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. see what happens. Who knows? I have to break out Who? my farmer's almanac or something. <laughs> Who knows? Well, we'll post the show with some real class show notes. And Aaron's got a bunch of links, and you want to follow them out to her site uh, a little as you're as you're going out there, out at theaverageguy.tv. Big big thanks to Ed Sullivan who joined us last week. Aaron Ed says he buys something every time you're on the show. So we'll have to figure out what he's going to buy tonight uh, from you. Right. Well, what, what did he get last time? We got a vacuum cleaner. I think that was two times ago. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's true. I think it was. Yeah. And he, I forget the last time, but he's, he says, if Aaron says buy it, he has to buy it. Isn't that nice? Thank Isn't that you. nice? Ed? Ed was on last week. And of course, uh, big thanks to Ed who came on. He had some interesting stuff. If you haven't checked it out, uh, go back and look at it. Big thanks to our Patreon subscribers as well. If you want to join the team and if you find value in the podcast and you want to give back, head out to theaverageguy.tv slash Patreon and get that done um, as well. Aaron Lawrence is back. Aaron, it's always great to see you. You're the most popular guest we have every single year. Thanks for coming back and welcome back. Really? Oh, oh yeah, that, for sure. That really actually does warm my heart. Thank yeah, you. And it's yeah. it's my pleasure to be here. I always have such a good time on your show. I'm I'm happy to be a guest. Well, and we were talking about Ed, but Brian says it may be an expensive <laughs> night uh, tonight. You never know. Uh, uh, you always talk about some uh, some great stuff. Of course, uh, TechEdgesCanada.com is your site. You Last time we chatted with you, we spent a little time talking about Timu, and you had said you're going to start kind of tr trying it out, checking it out, because it seems too good to be true it seems like right so catch us up i thought we'd start with this since we ended with it last time last time you were on here right catch us up That's a, that bit. was a long teaser then for your yeah. audience yeah Sorry, it was folks. a while no <laughs> i well i got some so, right afterwards i got some feedback and they were like oh don't go there and some were like oh it's fine so what did you find out I, I think it honestly depends what you're shopping for and what your expectations are. So if anybody's listening and they're not familiar with what Timu is, Timu.com, which is T-E-M-U.com, is essentially an Amazon clone. So lots of cheap goods um, that you can find at bargain basement prices, we'll say. So I had heard about the site. I was sort of getting pitched from... Uh, the company to check out their site and buy some of their things and try it out. And I just, I looked at the site and I thought, wow, like it's, it's very, it's very loud. It's very colorful. It's very in your face. So I didn't end up getting anything at that time. And I sort of sat on it and had enough people ask me questions about it that, you know, is it worth it? Is it any good? What can you get on Timu? So I thought, you know what, I'll spend a few bucks. I'll spend a hundred dollars, which was my budget and buy some stuff off Timu and report back. Tell everybody what they're getting, what you can expect. And I decided to stick with tech devices, so gadgets, speakers. Um, I ordered two speakers that look essentially identical, like identical to JBL speakers, but they're under a different brand name. 
Uh, I chose a pair of what look like AirPods. Again, identical to AirPods. I had them side by side and I actually had to keep the wrapping on the Timu AirPods, which are called ear pods so mm -hmm. that I could tell them apart. So I decided, okay, let's get these, see what we get, see what they look like. And it took about, I want to say it took a few weeks for things to arrive, but things arrived just fine. I was able to go online, pick out what I wanted. The prices were, of course, dirt cheap. I mean, my ear pods, I think, were $9.99. So some would say you're probably going to get what you're paying for. And if I can spoil ahead a little bit, I did get what I paid for. Mm, okay. So I ordered the two speakers and... I mean, they, I think they were 15 or $20 a piece. Um, the sound quality was not good. I mean, if you mm. wanted something for, you know, your kid's bedroom that you didn't mind if they dropped it in the sandbox or whatever, it would probably be just fine. If you wanted it to actually enjoy music or sound, the speakers would not just not cut it. So the speakers were not great. The ear pods uh, never worked. Mm. I tried to connect them to my phone. I tried to connect them to an Apple phone, to an Android phone. There was a little insert in the package that says they'll work with any phone, no matter what. Didn't work with any phone. Could never get them to work. So those were complete junk. And then I also ended up getting um, what I was kind of led to believe was a bit of an ambient like backlight for my studio. Um and it was it it arrived and it was kind of this weird like two light posts wired together with a USB plug and they weren't bright at all so you i mean they weren't a backlight they weren't even an ambient light i mean they lit up themselves but they weren't throwing out any kind of light so again they weren't suitable for what i was intending to use them for so all in all i decided everything's going back. It's all kind of, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't the quality I was hoping for. Again, I wasn't surprised. Mm -hmm. Um, so I filled out the form, asked them to take it all back, packaged it back up and they gave me my money back. Mm. So I was at least really impressed about that. They issued the refund almost immediately. Everything went back and like, just as I was wrapping up my reviews, I realized, um, I think it was the ear pods all of a sudden disappeared from the site because some, uh, somebody must have realized, you know, these, these don't actually work. So yeah, we should probably yeah, not be selling. Yeah. Them. Yeah. So a couple of the listings vanished and, you know, it's like, yep. it's a bit like whack-a-mole. I think they pop up as one listing and then people buy it and maybe it's a problem. So then it pops up as another listing somewhere else. I kind of think of it like a Chinese market where uh, vendors are allowed just to kind of come in and mm -hmm. anybody can kind of bring their stuff in and post it there. Yeah. They're providing, they're taking a cut of it, but they don't, there's no way for them to do quality checks on all, all of this. Was Alibaba, did you ever order from Alibaba? Were they kind of similar? I, I to think those? I've ordered one thing from Alibaba one time, okay. a, a table and it actually, it arrived quickly. It was pretty good quality. I was happy yeah. with it. We still have it. So um, that was the first and only time though. Cause Alibaba, I think tends to be for larger okay. orders or okay. multiples. Yeah. 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 Well, so probably it's a no, I, unless you're trying to get something, this may be a space like party things could be good for this, yes. right? Where you're, Hey, I just need, I need 500 cups for like a nickel. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And, yeah, I think yeah. D disposable things honestly yeah. would probably yeah. be really great or, yeah. you know, party favors for your kid's birthday party or, you know, you're you're throwing a party, a Christmas party at work and you just need some speakers to to put some sound around, you know, the office or something and you don't really care what happens to them after that. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think you got to be careful. Um I, I, like I said, I was glad that I did get my money back and there was sort of no questions asked about that. They weren't trying to, you know, to give me the runaround or anything right, like that. Right. So in I terms of honest business practices, that that was fine. Just the quality of the goods for me wasn't there. Yeah, I think they're trying. It's just they're relying, I think, on vendors and it's going to be, I mean, Amazon does something similar, but I, I think there's probably mm -hmm. maybe a little more 
quality checks that go into Amazon or they're getting yeah. better equipment. But you see on Amazon uh, a ton of those kinds. Like I went to order a drill bit, like a three quarter inch, 17 mm -hmm. inch, pretty specialized kind of drill bit. There's like seven different kinds that all names you don't recognize. These aren't Ace Hardware right. or yeah. Home Depot brands. You're not getting yeah. Craftsman or DeWalt, right? You're getting Nevin. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Who, who's Nevin? So or, I think or some brand names that aren't words necessarily. They're just kind of a <laughs> string of letters. I I find. <laughs> Random. Yeah, right? I have to put something in this field. I don't know. Yeah. And it looks exactly like it. It may come from the same yeah. exact factory in the U.S. markets. I'm sure it does. And we yeah. can add Canada, I think, to in North American mm. markets. So U.S. and U.S. and Canada. We probably see a lot of that where it's a factory. It could even be the same factory where they're coming out, but it's got a different name on it, sold through a different channel, so to speak. So the prices may not be there or you know, DeWalt in the U.S., and I, I'm seeing now my internet's having some trouble. So if I'm breaking up on you a little bit, I'll come back and let you do most of the talking. But um, uh, DeWalt gets a special price here in the U.S. just because it's that name brand. Sometimes you can get the off-brand, and uh, it's the same thing. It's just a different, it yeah. carries a different name, right, on that one. Yeah. Um, so will you, will you shop Timu for, for more disposable stuff in the future, knowing that maybe that's the way to do it? Or are you just going to go local for that kind of stuff? I, I think I'll just go to the brand. I thought, you know, there might be some benefit for, for my audience and for readers and viewers of the YouTube channel. If, if they were interested in some of this tech and I could try it out and, you know, give them a definitive review, but I, I think I might wait on it. I did. I asked my audience, you know, do, do you guys want me to order some more stuff and try this again and see if there's a different result or see if things are improving? And kind of universally, everybody just said, no, no. leave it alone, give it time and, you know, may, maybe next year. So maybe maybe I'll do that again. It'll be an annual Timu order and yeah. we'll just see <laughs> see what changes or what improves. You can do like, we spent $100 at Timu for 2023 and then next year it'll be for 2024. I see a lot of sites, a lot of uh, blog exactly. posts like that. Buying a TV in 2023, 20 you know, whatever. <laughs> Some comments coming, coming in, yeah, from the chat. Uncle Marv says, maybe swag for a conference and that may be, if you, mm -hmm. if you wanted to get some of those kinds of things you knew you were going to give away or whatever uh, um, uh, to do that. Uh, Kevin says everything on Timu looks a lot like knockoffs. They seem to imply that the devices are made at the same factories uh, as the name brand. The headphones look a lot like Bose, but they're not. You showed that speaker on your video. You have a YouTube video that we'll post the link to in our show notes if you mm -hmm. want to go out and watch Aaron's full review on that. But it looks like a JBL speaker, almost identical to a JBL speaker, right? But it was like T and C or something along yeah, those lines. The only thing different on it's the emblem. Although I do wonder yeah. if they're not, maybe it's the person who's, or the company that's manufacturing like the case, the outside, yeah. and then the guts are, they're getting them from wherever. Cause the right. speaker quality was just so bad Ugh. that, I mean, if it sounded like JBL, I would, I would have thought, you know, okay, I could maybe yeah. get behind yeah. this under a different label, yeah. but well, Bose and JBL are going to be licensed products, so they probably, mm -hmm. they're just taking something off. But the cover, whoever makes the cover, mm -hmm. maybe they have a, sh you know, those are made in China. <laughs> JBL yeah. makes them in yeah. China. But they yeah. can buy the covers and then just replace the emblem, you know, that's on there. Uh, Tony says, uh, aren't there, are there rumors about them selling your data? I am sure they're selling your data, right? You wouldn't think. Did you use a separate credit card or any of those, like, did you take any measures? Uh -huh. uh, maybe not. <laughs> I didn't. Um, yeah. And then I, I guess they've got my address. There is, there, there was a funny part. I'm, I swear I did not give them my phone number because mm -hmm. I, they don't mm -hmm. need my mm -hmm. phone number and I don't generally give out my phone number for any reason. Um, but I did start getting texts out of nowhere from Timu updating me on oh, my order. Yeah. And I thought, how do you have my phone number? Yeah. Because I, I have a fake number that I put in for almost all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, so I was like, I don't know how they got the number. Yeah. So some good, some good data mining, probably some good CRMs. It's probably shown up out there. Yes. Yeah, somewhere, you know, you never, you never really know. I've been getting 
it's really weird. Jim at the average guy.tv, which I use for the email address here just for mm-hmm. podcasts. I only say it there. I don't use it for anything but podcasting. Somehow well, I signed up for a few service, a few podcasting services. Right. They definitely sold them like it. Cause yeah. all of a sudden I started getting like, Hey, all kinds of news. I'm getting all kinds of press releases. You yeah, must get special thousands offers. of those. Come check out our right. Come. Hey, we're releasing this. Do you get, just get bombarded with those every day? I do. And because I worked in, in journalism and sort of mainstream media for so long, I think I'm on a lot of lists. So I, I get a ton of pitches and, you know, people can reach out to me through YouTube. So I I get a lot of, uh, a lot of Amazon sellers will reach out and want to know if I'll review their product and stuff. So yeah, I I do get a lot of email. I have someone to help me with my email now because it is, Mm -hmm. it's kind of a crazy volume. For sure. Uncle Marv says it's China. They probably already had your phone number. (laughs) He says Uh dollar store might be a better value, at least here in the United States. Do you guys have dollar store in in Canada? We do. Okay. It's a, it's a $5 store, but yes. (laughs) (laughs) You turn that joke around on me. Nicely done. Very well. Very well done. Well, let's dig into some tech. Uh, You have recently spent a little time reviewing a, a Chromebook plus. And I so listen, I so desperately w- want to live in a Chromebook environment of, or have one. I've thought about that. I can just never pull the trigger. It, it's is 2023 a time I buy a Chromebook or talk a little bit about the review, the Asus Chromebook CX 34. Yeah. So Chromebook plus, I would almost put in a different class of okay. laptop from a traditional Chromebook. Um, Google and some of the manufacturers that they've approved to manufacture the Chromebook Plus. Um, they've added a lot to it. Um, I'm going to try and remember this off the top of my head, but they've doubled the memory. Um, they've doubled the speed and the processing power. There were three or four things on the Chromebook Plus lineup that they literally doubled. So better hardware. So- yeah, a lot yeah. better hardware, a lot better speed. Um, it's just going to be a a faster and sharper machine now. Um, and I know that's when I last reviewed a Chromebook, I think that was, gosh, it was possibly almost eight or 10 years ago. Um, but they could really bog down. Um, you know, that was, that was, again, something that Google said they weren't supposed to do. But my experience and other yeah. people I know... Yeah. It's what happened. They were so. like netbooks. They were on the Windows version of netbooks, and they were just kind of low price, but for for yeah. consumer, especially for the prosumer, just underpowered, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it, underpowered. Yeah. So I think what Google has been doing is listening to what consumers have been saying about the Chromebooks and sitting down with their engineers and saying, okay, let's fix this stuff. So you know, they sort of, I went to the press briefing in New York City and got to sit in and listen to, you know, the changes they made and why they made these changes and what they decided to do. And I left really impressed, actually, that they've been hearing what people actually want to use these machines for and have tried to make a better machine that's going to be a lot more valuable while still keeping it in that lower tier price range. Because that was the other thing about Chromebooks. Um, I know for you know, educational systems and schools. Chromebooks are are in a lot of cases all that they can afford to use for students. So um, they really wanted to keep that lower price tier and they did. I think the Asus Chromebook uh, was about just under 400 bucks. Mm-hmm. Well, for US on Amazon, the one, the link from your site, 439 um, yeah. is what they have it at. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, that's still pretty reasonable for a laptop. Mm -hmm. But the other thing they did with this Plus lineup is they've kind of gone all in on AI. So they've given you access to Adobe's whole new suite of um, AI, like photo editing. And there's going to be a whole bunch of new things that were supposed to come out this uh, later this fall towards the winter. Um, that I hadn't had a chance to try out yet. But there's things like AI writing help and AI like calendar management. And they were giving us a demo at this briefing that sort of shows all the things that you can just ask your laptop to do for you. And, you know, it'll 
it'll generate a packing list. You can say, check the weather and then tell me what to pack oh. for my long weekend in Miami. And it'll generate a packing list for you. So just like clever and smart things like that. So the other really cool features that I liked were um, the photo editing features that they had. So some of the photo editing features, I'm thinking like magic eraser where you can more easily remove things you don't want in a photo or unblur, things like that. Um, those are now available in the Chromebook, which is huge. Um, they've got these great video calling enhancements, which, um, you know, improve your appearance. They give you, um, controls at the system level for your video calls. So that was actually something I thought was smart is because when we're all on zoom calls or, you know, a team's call or whatever system we're all using, everybody's looking for the controls and I'm on mute. Sorry. I don't know where the control is. We've all been on those conference calls, right? So these, the Chromebook plus puts those controls at the system level. So in your task bar, so whatever platform you're on, you can access the controls for your video call right on the task bar, mm. which I think is so smart because now mm -hmm. we don't all have to go hunting for that. So right. that was just a really smart and practical use. Does it, can you do um, Teams or Zoom integrations on these? Will, the, will, 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 the, will it work with applications like that? Yeah, I think I didn't check all of them, but it worked on, I tried it with Zoom and it worked on Zoom and there was one other one. I think it was Google Meet, of course, um, will do it. Um, they did say it was supposed to work with pretty much every system. I know if some of them are more proprietary, maybe not, yeah, but the yeah, ones yeah. I tried it with yeah. Yeah. did work and worked well. You mentioned in your review, 10, 10 years of updates and that, <laughs> that's a lot. 10 years is although windows has you know you think they always say five or six and they've gone yeah. 10 they've gone a long time do you believe google they, they've released things and then pulled them back do you believe them true i do um they got a lot of bad press i think it was earlier this spring um when all these school boards had bought sort of discount overstock chromebooks and then found out they were going to get bricked like two or three years into after having bought them. So, I mean, as you can imagine, a school board with a fixed budget, you know, can't just be splashing out on new laptops every two or three years. So they got a lot of flack for that. So they really want people to, I think, trust that they're going to be there for you. I don't know if a lot of people keep their laptops for that years? long? Yeah, it's a long time. Did did you get the feeling the hardware would last 10 years? I mean, traditionally, these have not been super solid, you know, pieces of equipment. Yeah. Did they feel a little more solid to you as you, as you held them? They do. I, I got to bring one home and try it out here and kind of carry it around and use it as I would. And I mean, it certainly feels a little lighter and, you know, there's a little more, I, I think it's plastic or aluminum than you would find on something like a MacBook Pro. But again, you're you're these are different machines in a different price category. So it didn't feel it didn't feel cheap to me. Okay. Um, will will the hardware last as long as the software updates? Will you get a decade out of your Chromebook Plus? Have to have to wait and see. I don't know, but it it didn't feel cheap to me when I was okay. using it. Any additional uh, subscription costs out of the box with them? Am, am I paying? You know, you mentioned Adobe and all of a sudden, I mean, that's like the old days and my, yeah. my viewers from a long time ago will know whenever I said Drobo, they would put dollar signs in the chat, you know, it, and you say Adobe and you think, oh yeah. boy, there's $59 gone forever. Right. Um, well, there, maybe there is a catch with that then. So the, some of the Adobe system software that you're getting is mm -hmm. it's cloud-based. So you're not getting Photoshop because the, the Chromebook plus is not big enough to hold all mm -hmm. of the, yeah. the software that you need anyway. Um, so it's special sort of online versions. I think they call them web, like Adobe web or something. Okay. Um, mm. So you're getting kind of a, a not quite full service version of the software that does operate in your browser. So it's, it's not the same as Photoshop, but you know, for having all of that included for the price you're paying in the laptop, it's actually pretty good. 
um, Brian in the chat says some of the uh, some of the benefits of the Apple products are how their products work so well together in an ecosystem. Do these newer beefed up Chromebooks uh, push working well with other Google hardware? We're going to talk about the a watch here in a second, but do you get that sense? I don't know of any. I'm I'm trying to. I'm having a hard time thinking of what else would be in that ecosystem. But any thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess, I mean, your Pixel phone, if you wanted to, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, not to invoke Apple on a on a Google phone, but if you wanted <laughs> yeah. to airdrop something from your Pixel phone to your <laughs> Chromebook Plus, um, uh, that's a great question, actually. I didn't try mm. that during my review period. I probably should have. Um, mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I'll have to give that a try. Okay. Sarah, my wife, just picked up a brand new Pixel 8, and she's got the standard version of it, but... She was pretty excited about it. And it was one of those, it was really weird because usually she makes me do the tech purchases and she must have been comfortable enough. One night she said, oh, by the way, I bought the Pixel 8. I was, <laughs> I felt cheated on. I was like, <laughs> what? 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 you didn't you? even talk to me. I, we, we could talk about it on the show, you know, but yeah, it, it, she just, she just picked one up. It's already, she's traveling for the weekend. So she was loading stuff up last night. She it was interesting. Cause she was saying, this is so great. How I can transfer the information from, she had a pixel six, how I can take mm -hmm. it from the pixel six to the pixel eight. I just put the two next to each other and they trans. I'm pretty yeah. sure Google's the only one. And I was like, no, Apple does that as well. Settle down there. And you, you know, can't even do them from Apple to Google and vice versa. You, if you, you can. Yeah. 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 The yeah. last time I set up a, I think it was the Pixel 8, actually. Um, okay. There's an option now. I think you have to hard connect it. Okay. Um, and it's kind of limited into what it'll move. Yeah. So, yeah. but you can, whatever's you can open, get some of that. You know, whatever's, yeah. whatever's open on both platforms to be able to yeah. go. So it yeah, I your calendar and things I, like that. I didn't. I have not even touched that. I, like I said, I'm telling you, I feel cheated on. She took the phone. <laughs> I haven't even held it yet. She put the. I had. She had the blue gloves on last night and was putting the screen mm. protector on there. And either I taught her well or she's found a new love. Uh, <laughs> Nathaniel says Teams works fine on the web version. And uh, Bob Good. says uh, Microsoft is a full suite of. Office 365 apps, including Teams for the Chrome platform, that would work as well too. And the Office apps right, are yes. pretty good, right? In that in that space, especially the web apps are um, are, are pretty mm -hmm. good. So um, John says I did the same thing: Pixel 6 Pro to the Pixel 6 8 Pro. I'm on the second year upgrade cycle. So um, yeah, I never I never in a million years thought she would be the Android person and I would be the iPhone person. Right. But that's that's kind of using a Mac Mini and some of those other things. That's kind of where we landed. Um, would you recommend like where in the where in the world does this Chromebook fit in? Is it is this a play really just for better hardware for schools, or could this? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. The apparently the oh. thumbs up is working. <laughs> You got yeah. the Apple gestures. Yeah, yes. yeah, here in StreamYard, isn't that? That's kind of cool. I, it doesn't do, do the hand raise though. Gym. That the What's hand. The other one. Uh, no, uh, this. I think no. it's peace. Oh, this one, right? Is it peace science? There we go. There we go. Yeah, we did this on Ask the Podcast Coach on Saturday. <laughs> Just uh, yeah. It's I, I did have to do a video about that because my husband was on a conference call after having updated his MacBook, and you know, having a serious business call and, you know, closed a deal. So he was like, yes, thank you. Yeah. And, or I th I, whatever he did. And all of a sudden he said, there's fireworks going off or mm -hmm. something or mm -hmm. like bubbles and things. And he was so embarrassed because he's like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> they just do it so for you. So we looked you. it up. Yeah. Yeah. I think a single, you have to turn those off. Single piece is balloons. Right. And then if you do a double piece sign, I got to get that where the camera can Fireworks. see it. No, I think confetti comes down. Oh, confetti. The, there you go. And, and balloons. then there's thumbs oh. up and thumbs down. Oh, there's a thumbs Give down. Bubbles. Oh, there's a oh, thumbs down. Oh, okay. What else? Not planned. This and was none of this was planned, but what else? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there there was at least one more. Something gives you fireworks. Mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted there to be like yeah. and do the your, yeah, your head's like, exploding. Ah, and but, then, sadly, it, would, no. it would do some crazy stuff. Brian says in the chat, get us back on track. Seems to be getting <laughs> easier to hold off multi years of on upgrading devices between being well made and more incremental improvements year over year. Agreed. Yeah, you know, I have the an iPhone 12 
and we're on 15, right? And how mm-hmm. the 15 just came out. And I seriously looked into it, had put all the trade in stuff in, was ready yeah. to pull the trigger. I think I was going to pay 700, 600, 700 bucks for, yeah. probably for the new one. And I went, you know, my 12 is still working pretty well. Why, why would, you know, I had that, maybe I'll just run this thing to dust the end. They weren't giving me as much on the trade in as I've gotten in years past. Mm. So I was kind of like, maybe I'll run this thing to dust and, and then just buy, knowing I'm going to have to buy a thousand dollar phone um, yeah. at, at some, some point. point. Yeah. Yeah. And- but you're right. The, up, the upgrades do feel really incremental now. You know, we, I think we're, we're at least 10 years on from a company that can really surprise and dazzle people with something that comes in on a phone. Now I'm, I'm on the iPhone 13 Mm -hmm. and I'm with you, Jim. I kind of looked at the 15 and thought, you know, this would be great. Like I'll review it and you know, it's, it's for work. So why don't I get it? But I, the 13 works great. I'm pretty happy with it. And, you know, I keep, I'm also conscious of that. Like maybe the 16 will be the, the really exciting one that I'm going to wish I waited for. So I'm kind of holding out. I think I'll wait for the next one, but we'll see. Bob, Bob, producer, Bob reminds us it's a lot more Canadian dollars (laughs) for the 15, right? So Uh, many more dollars. Yeah. So many. It's like a mortgage payment. Well, it's getting there these days. Uh, Tony says iPhone is the only phone that, has a decent trade in Best Buy offered less than three hundred for my nineteen oh, wow. Z Fold Four. So, oh, that's yeah, well, interesting. I didn't know Best Buy did trade ins either. I usually just take my iPhone back to Apple. Mm-hmm. Yeah, credit, well, and it's some like all of our Best Buys have closed here in Omaha for the most part. You can't really. Yeah, we're and we're one of those markets. Like we're the first ones when things start getting tight. Like think of like right. Tulsa and Omaha and um, Indianapolis, some of those, those markets, they shut those, like, those are the, they go first mm, and it's always okay. a sign. It's always a sign, you know, when, when, um, comp USA way back in the day was starting to go under ours were gone. Like they right. just radio poof, shack. closed the door. Yeah. Did you guys have radio shack? We did. Oh yeah. Yeah. The radio shack, the shack, I think as the they shack. were calling it by the end. Um, well, let's talk about that pairing of that. You looked at uh, a Google Pixel Watch 2. What would you think of that? I'll tell you what I think of it. I, I have an iPhone. I'm wearing the Google Pixel Watch. The Pixel Watch does not work with the iPhone. I'm still wearing it. I won't take it off. <laughs> I love it as a watch. Wow. It's completely useless with my iPhone, but it's... It's a fantastic enough watch and it's got a few features that I really like and I really love the design. So I wear it instead of my Apple watch, which just sits over here on its charger and looks kind of sad and lonely. Man, I feel, I feel sorry for you out. You're just out. You're out. Apple. Apple. Okay. So what are the, what are the, yeah. What's doing it for you then? What's the difference? Uh, Primarily the battery life. So the Mm. Apple watch for the last couple of generations has been really poor battery life and they have just not made any measurable improvements in the battery life. So I think the Apple watch I have is the five. Okay. And I just keep waiting for them to give me a watch that can get sort of more than a day or yeah. eight hours. Like I only yeah. will get about eight or 10 hours out of that really? watch battery now. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I think they deprecate really quickly. Um, so, I mean, I, the Apple watch is great. If you, if you have an iPhone and you want a watch, I mean, we were talking earlier about the seamlessness of that whole mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just mm-hmm. works. You can get your phone calls, you can respond to texts, you can do everything. It syncs with your calendar. But I just, I can't justify a new Apple Watch until they do better on the battery. So when I got the Pixel 2 watch in to try out, um, I used it with um, the Pixel 8 smartphone that I had also for review. And I I love it. I think the design is fantastic. Um, one of the big pluses for me about that watch is that it's got Fitbit integration. So oh. Google bought Fitbit a couple of years ago now, I think it was. And so all of the Fitbit 
benefits and features that were included in things like those Fitbit trackers or, you know, the Fitbit Sense smartwatch or I'm trying to think Fitbit Lux, some of those activity monitors. Um, they're all in the Pixel Watch. So I get my steps counted. I get my sleep tracked, which the iPhone has also been miserable at for many, many years. So I just, I really like the watch. I think it's comfortable. Um, the battery lasts, it lasts about 28 hours, I think I was getting out of it. So just over a full day, whereas my Apple watch was only really giving me eight or 10 hours, like I said. So I love it. It's it's fast. It's responsive. It's customizable. It's it's just a really nice design, and it integrates really well with the Pixel phone. Yeah, you know, and I imagine feature parity as far as we think about the apps. There's probably plenty of sleep apps on the in the in the uh, Android. Probably even some of the same ones, right? They developed the app for mm -hmm. both for the app, both the Apple Watch and, right. and for the Pixel Watch. Um, interesting, you say that. So I'm on the I'm on Gen Four. I've had my watch off of the, you know, off of the charger since this morning, you know, probably mm -hmm. I pick it up probably at seven and I'm still at 57%. So oh, we're, yeah. yeah, we're what? 12, Maybe I got a lemon. we're 12 or 13 hours into it. And I could probably go another, but okay. Let's be real for a second. You, you really need either like 16 or 32 because yeah. It, it doesn't matter. You're well. I guess if you're going to wear it, it matters. Wear it at bed, it matters, right? Right. Because you want a full twenty four, and then it really needs to be at that point. It really needs to be more than twenty four because you don't want to die it in the middle of the night. So it needs to be thirty two right. hours, yeah. right? So you have time to wake up, throw it on a charger, take a shower, right? Do or or at some point in time, I've heard of folks saying, "Well, I when I sit at the desk." I pull it off in the evenings or whatever and charge it in that yeah. way. What are your charging routines? How do you, now that you're wearing that, I'm assuming full time, what are yes. your charging routines? I've gotten used to when I come into the office, the home office in the morning, I'll sit down and sort of get organized and I'll put my pixel two watch down on the charger for, you know, 20 minutes or so. Um, but I'm still, I, I want a watch that lasts a, a week. Like I'm greedy, yeah, yeah. but I know it's possible because all of right. the Fitbit devices that I've reviewed, I would say in the last six or eight years, yeah. all last between five and seven days. So I know a small, but really powerful battery is possible. And I'm, I'm but, still a little choked that more companies can't do more to deliver that. Don't you think it's the screen though? I mean, it's the screen that's eating sure. up all, right? And so the everybody Fitbit wants to be always on display. Yeah. Sarah was, I was telling you in the pre-show, my wife is totally nesting at the moment. She's now working from home. So she's going through everything and I, things keep showing up on my desk. It's like technology stuff of like, Hey, here's a video, here's a video camera I was using, but I'm no longer using, or she brought a Fitbit in. I think I'd given that to her like six years ago to try and never saw it again. But think about those. Those were a little slim. They were. Mm -hmm bracelet like really, yeah yeah bracelet like very uh spartan sorry i keep doing the thumbs up there spartanish <laughs> um displays not met is as, as i'm as we're looking at your review on screen here i mean it it's an apple watch it's just round instead of being square and True. that's got a that's got to hurt battery life right yeah, I think you can, like most smartwatches, I think these days you can turn the screen off. But to me, that's that's half the reason of wearing a yeah. watch is so yeah. that you can, you know, glance down and you don't have to do the whole bring your arm all the way up and tilt it so that it knows you want to look at it. Right. Which you do have to do with some Fitbits and yeah. even my Apple Watch sometimes. Yeah, no, that's I have mine on that. Maybe that's why I get such a good battery life is because I have it set to the. It's not always on. Right. I need to, yes, I need to bring it up. That's probably true. Yeah. To yeah. Bring it up. Um, I um, I like using my smartwatches when I sleep because I like them to track my sleep. So that was kind of one of the, the annoyances of the Apple watch was the suggestion that, well, overnight is a great time to charge it, you know, put it on one of these special docks and it'll display like an alarm clock. And I thought, well, 
I mean, it didn't really track sleep anyway, but right. I thought I, I don't want to take the watch off at night because I want to use some of those sleep tracking benefits. So, um, I actually, I don't mind wearing a smartwatch to bed either. It's, I know it bothers some people, but it doesn't bother me. And I mean, I, that goes for both the Apple watch and the pixel Two watch, but they're pretty, they're pretty comfortable and the silicone bands aren't, you know, itchy or yeah. sweaty. So yeah. I, I think it's good. I've thought of wearing Apple during the day and a Fitbit at night. Like that has been, you know, so then I wake up in the morning, pull the Fitbit off, put it on the charger, yeah. take a shower, go downstairs. I have a routine, you know, come downstairs, grab my Apple watch, throw that on, log into it, you know, put the password or put the pin in. And like, that's a schedule I could, I could get used to. I could keep, but seem to be using the best. Cause I think the Fitbit is better at sleep yes. than the i than the Definitely. than the than the Apple Watch, right? It's yeah. it's really it's really good at that. Um, I noticed in your video, which we'll post the link to it uh, here, the average guy TV slash hgg five nine one. If you want to get to the show notes, um, I noticed it has some blood oxygen tracking and some mm-hmm. of those other kinds of things. Two weeks ago, I did a health update, and I admitted we play. I have a a, a blood ox monitor that we keep on the table for like we, and we, and we have a blood pressure cuff that we keep at the table, the dinner table. And we challenge each other to see who can get the lowest (laughs) or the highest. Yeah. Like, okay, (laughs) breathe, breathe, you know, kind of thing. Um, do you find yourself checking those? Like this has got the AFib monitor on it. I did it a couple of times when I first got it and I'm like, well, I don't have an AFib, so I'm good. (laughs) Right. Do you find yourself using those features at all? I do. Yeah. Um, and for the most part, they're tied in through Fitbit on the pixel watch. Um, but I, I do like, I do like knowing that stuff. And I think it's, you know, knowing your heart rate and stuff is almost more important if you're working out or trying to get your heart rate up for weight loss or cardio or whatever. Um, but no, I think it's, it's good to know some of that stuff on the flip side though. There's so much data you can get from a watch these days yeah. that I think most of it is lost on on most people. Mm-hmm. Um, I found the blood oxygen really helpful through COVID. That you know that was a, supposed to be one of the indicators of if you might be coming down with yep. COVID. That's so, why we got one. That's why we got it. Yeah. Yeah, and I found it was helpful. I actually did get COVID, and my husband was very concerned. And I said, no, 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 it's okay. I've got the the blood oxygen monitor and it says I'm still at like 98% or whatever it was. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, if that starts to slip, we'll be concerned and, you know, consult a doctor, but look, the watch says I'm healthy. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the watch says I'm healthy. The watch says I'm healthy. So says the watch. Well, and right. Tony had said out in chat, he was, let's see if I can find it. Oh, he says, I almost fell into a ravine the other day flying my drone. Apple Watch Ultra started screaming at me and started to call 911, right? You've fallen. Do we need to? It's almost like OnStar yeah. from, from yes. that, right? Right. Yeah. And the Pixel Watch has that too. There's all kinds of really cool emergency features. And you can, I think with both of them, you can name a contact. And if you don't respond after a certain time, it'll it'll call your emergency contact or 911 and stuff. That's um, I think that's actually really good for you know, for seniors, if you've got yeah. older parents or or someone you you want to keep an eye on, you know, it gives yeah. you a bit of peace of mind. They and they would never know how to use the watch, though. That's the thing. You would put them <laughs> on it and they would be like, this thing, I hate this thing. Never tell. I I just want to tell the time. And you know how that. Works. Yes, you know how that I works. do. Brian in chat says uh, I'm a few model. I'm a few model years old on my Apple Watch using a Series 6. Doesn't hold the charge as long as it used to. So kind of confirming, I'm kind of wondering maybe at the model five, if it began to get a little sketchy Mm because the four has been just rock solid for, it's a four. I mean, I've had this watch for a long time, right? Well, long relative to how things, you know, I I paid as much. I never. Long in tech years. Listen, watches have, there've always been expensive watches. I never would have paid this for a Swatch watch or a Swiss a Swiss made watch. I would be like, yep. what? A, I don't, I Timex is Timex. Fine. <laughs> but then you, these things come out and I'm like $500. Sure. I'll give you my money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, Brian says, uh, but I found out using a portable charger in the middle of the day has helped. Mm-hmm. So having one, well, and that's the kind of thing you can buy various chargers, have them in various spots for you. Right. Yeah. 
but you that's, shouldn't have that's to. The thing I'm with that, you. That's I'm exactly with you. what I'm saying. Companies yeah. need to do better. Apple needs to do better. Google can do better because they own Fitbit and I know Fitbit's done better. So I think we need a watch that's going to last three or four days. Maybe that'll be, we were talking about there hasn't been many big innovations. Maybe that'll be the next thing is a, an Apple watch or a Pixel watch that lasts a full week. That that would blow my mind. I, I would pay money, Canadian dollars for that. To go from a day to a week is that's a big percentage increase. What about three days? Would you if it, if you got three days out of it, would you would that be enough? I could oh, be big convinced. Jump. Big I, jump to a week. For 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 what I have now, it would actually be a significant improvement. Yeah. But I still think we can do better. Okay. What's the price on the pixel? But just as you think generally, Ooh, does it compare with Apple, the Apple watch or, or I think it does. Yeah. Yes. I did not take note of the price. If do you have the, uh, the article there? I Jim? do have the, I do have the article. We'll bring it up. Is it, it should be down at the bottom of the, down at the very bottom. Okay. We'll scroll yeah. down here. 399. There we Three, go. Oh, here we go. 349 a, US. Yep. For the Bluetooth, Wi-Fi mm -hmm. Bluetooth. You know, I, I'll be honest. I'm not even sure. Since I went, so T-Mobile, I was Sprint when I bought this watch. We've since Sprint got consumed by T-Mobile here in the United States. No oh, more Sprint. okay. I'm not sure my, I have a cellular plan. I'm paying for it. I'm not sure my watch is actually using it. Like, oh. I think I was supposed to go in and have a SIM replacement or something like that. Okay. Now, the phone switched over. They sent us kits for the phones. Yeah. So the phone switched over just fine. I don't think my watch switched over i think it's not on cellular which i'm paying for every week or I was every gonna month say, i hope you're not paying for it well yeah, it's ten dollars it's not terrible and i listen a hundred percent of the time my phone is with me and it's paired i you know the, the apple watch is paired with the phone i almost don't know it this is how i've gotten this far where i was the other day i was somewhere and i didn't have my phone with me and i tried doing something on my watch and then i was like uh, it didn't work or it was really right. slow and even in the yard, I have, it connects to the Wi-Fi. So like, oh, I never yeah. notice it when I'm at home, but I, and at work, I connect to the work Wi-Fi. I've set that up. So I would never know there. So I was somewhere and I was going to do something and I couldn't do it. And I checked the SIM. Huh. It was like, you have no SIM. And I'm like, oh, so I might need to, I keep yeah. saying I might need to do that. But I literally, that was the one time in three years. It's been two years right. since we, right? Save and yourself the 10 <laughs> bucks, add it up and buy a Govi corner floor lamp. Oh, yeah. You've been, so I've been using Govi, <laughs> like, uh, um, you know, Govi sensors and Govi. Mm -hmm. some, they're doing lamps and stuff like that. I didn't bring that. I can't bring that up on screen, but have you had good luck with the Govi? It seems like they're everywhere now. So you've been they, messing with those? Yeah. Um, I'm a latecomer to Govi. I only kind of reviewed my first Govi light maybe two years ago. And that was sort of the first I had heard of it. Um, I was really deep in the Philips Hue ecosystem for yeah. a long time. And yeah. that was kind of all I was interested in. Um, but I got my first Govi light and they blew my mind. The Their lights are super easy to set up. Their app is fantastic. Really easy to use. Um, even people who are not tech savvy could totally make the most of a Govi light. And speaking of ecosystems, they've got a really strong ecosystem where you can put all of these lights together in the app and get them all to work together. So I've reviewed a handful of Govi lights over the last year. And the latest one is Govi's floor lamp, which I think is also called corner lamp. And it might also be called Lyra in some places I've seen it. Um, but it's a fantastic little light. It's it's a decent price. It's a great way to get light into a dark corner, which is where we've sort of placed it in our house. And you get all kinds of color changing options. You get full white light spectrum. So if you need it as kind of a, you know, desk light or an office light or task light, it, it'll work for that too. Um, it's just a super fun light. I really, really liked it. And my husband's been trying to steal it. He wants it for his office. We put it in the <laughs> living room for the review. And he's like, you yeah. know, my office is kind of dark. Maybe I could. Uh... <laughs> so I, I might have to get him one of his own for Christmas. But um, great, great light. And the Govi light I reviewed right before that was called the Govi Curtain Light, which I kind of looked this light up. I heard about it. And I thought, what is a curtain light? Like, does it attach to your curtains? What is happening here? 
And it's essentially like if anybody remembers those beaded curtains or beaded door, I don't know, dividers, room dividers. It's kind of like that. So it's it's a whole bunch of strings of lights that all work together. So it's really fun. You hang it up. You can hang it in a window. You can hang it on a wall. You can hang it in a doorway. Um, and it'll do all these like color and light patterns. So super fun for the holidays. We had it and we put it up in our window for Halloween and did a whole bunch of, you know, like pumpkins and witches and ghosts and things in the window. So we didn't have to decorate for Halloween otherwise. Mm. So it was fantastic. Hmm. And they've got a whole bunch of Halloween or I mean, um, Christmas rather and holiday options. So it's kind of fun and it looks very different. It's very unique. It would be fun for anybody who's got a gaming room or like an entertainment room or a media room. Um, yeah, I was a huge fan of this light. I wasn't expecting to like it. I kind of thought it was a bit of a gimmick and kind of a little silly and, until I tried it. And then I was like, okay, I'm sold. Fun. So for those only on the audio, you would kind of explain this as a blanket of lights that then's programmable. So you can go into the app, I'm assuming, choose some pre-configured options. And does it, am I right, that you can kind of program your own yeah. on that? As far as and actually a blanket like? is a really good way to describe that because that's sort of the overall effect is it creates this or like a dot matrix almost, right? Of, yeah. of all yeah. these different lights hanging from yeah. this one top wire. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of different presets and then you do have the ability to sort of draw your own colors or shapes or patterns or logo, whatever you want. So I, I couldn't quite find something that worked for Halloween. So I ended up sort of drawing this like pixel pumpkin thing and it actually looked great. Like from the street at our house, you could totally, you know, you could tell it was a pumpkin. It was, it was yeah. very artistic and well done, obviously. <laughs> but uh, how no, long did it take really you? Cool. How long did it take oh, you to design? Oh, just a couple minutes. Okay, so oh, not they, too bad. they make it so easy. No, that really? you call up a grid in the app and it sort right. of says, okay, what color do you want your background lights to be? And it's, a, it's almost like giving you a blank canvas. And then you just tell it, okay, I want orange. And you sort of draw it on these little this little grid of squares with your finger and then you can change the colors and then you just tap it and it says send to light and then it's up on your wall it's pretty you can, pretty clever you're showing on screen you did a little countdown then with some fireworks and oh the bubbles yeah that, they've got the, everything covered do the bubbles work in this mode they do they oh there work. we go <laughs> bubbles and balloons <laughs> Oh, oh gosh, goodness. that's just too much. That is yep. that is too much. Well, it would be fun. I would think this could be fun for kids to, you could turn the app over to them and say, hey, make some, be appropriate. But yeah. <laughs> but here's some things to make almost like, uh, what was the Microsoft program that was big blocks? Um, oh, um, uh, connect, no. No, no, the chat room will tell me. Oh, I, why can't I think of this? It's, you know, I'm talking about. I can about. picture them. Yeah. So these are big. The X. Yeah. 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 So the, people are screaming at us in cars right now. <laughs> as they're listening to this. It's this. Why can't yes. you remember that? Come on, chat room. Help Meccano? us out. What? Meccano? No, 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 no. This is a mic. Microsoft bought this. They'll, they'll, the chat room will come. Okay. Yes. It. But, but I, I unintended, like, the, the, this could be, it's very dot matrix kind of, yeah. except you get all the colors because you're, you know, it's a, it's, it, you know, these are, these are the, the ability to change every single light. Every individual light. That's at Minecraft is Bob. Bob's the winner. Uh, well, actually Tony was the winner first. He got out there. <laughs> Minecraft. I don't know why I could too much. Uh, 1792 got it. probably kicking in. At that point. <laughs> there you go. But um, do, Okay. But let's let me ask you this. So you got this curtain. It's a blanket. You hang it in your window. How long does it stay up for? Do do you keep it up for long periods of time? Does it go? Does it move over easily so that you can get sunlight right. in there? I mean, practically speaking, oh, yeah. fun gadget. But do you, how yeah. long do you keep it up for? Um, it's interesting because you you can't really tell that it's up in the window when. Like during the daylight, because oh, really? the, the light strings are okay. almost like silvery, clear. Translucent, kind of. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, not, yeah. I, I wouldn't no. say it's obvious during the day. Um, 
I had them moved around my house. I kind of had them inside and on a wall and, you know, around the TV. And then we put them up in the window just before Halloween. Um, but you can hang it up in a couple different ways. It'll, it comes with these sort of hooks. So you can, you know, almost like tack it to your wall if you want. And then there's also these sticky pads, which is what we use to put them in the window and the sticky stuff, you know, held it up there mm-hmm. quite well. And mm-hmm. it, seemed to pop right off when I took it down. Um, but the, the, our neighbors are, are two younger girls and they loved the lights. So every night I was trying to do uh, something different to impress nice. the neighbor girls. Right. Uh, for Halloween. Yeah. So I, I did take it down with the intention of maybe they would find it in their Ah, a little Christmas gift nice. so they could experience the joys of, yeah. of holiday tech. Outdoor rated? Can you hang this up outdoors or is it only... Did they you, are you outdoor know? rated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have okay. to keep... There's a controller box, like a power button on it that you're supposed yeah. to keep out of direct weather, but okay. otherwise the rest okay. of it is is outdoor rated. Yeah. Put it inside. You can get... I'm sure you can get like a little box outside to lock yes, it up to keep exactly. the weather keep the weather out of it. Yeah. Interesting. I, I actually have hung up Christmas lights for the very first time in 20 years. I, I oh, went out. Wow. Yeah. I, I don't know what it was a couple of years. Well, 20 years ago, I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And <laughs> I think it's cause I was trying to hang them on the eaves and that's just, that's just hard. This year I just stapled them to the deck and I went down, <laughs> down and back. <laughs> like, that was very Clark Griswold of you. Didn't get carried away. <laughs> Although as soon as I put them up, my second thought was, you know, maybe I can go to Menards. That's our big box, like hardware store. Maybe I can go to Menards and get one of those trees and I can put it in the flag. You know, we got a flag pole okay. holder, you know, put them in there. <laughs> so yeah. I haven't bought it yet, but there may be additional accessories coming, oh, okay. but this would work. This would could. You could put this in a window and program a new Christmas thing every single. Yeah. What's the what's the retail on that thing? I think they're about two hundred dollars, if I remember okay. correctly. So and bit, the other thing bit. that might help folks too is you can connect. I think it's up to three strings together. Oh, so like if you did want to put something sort of you know across the front of your house, yeah, you could get a pretty wow. big holiday you could get display fancy going. With this thing light blanket you get fancy plug it into your <laughs> laptop and show a football game on it or something like Whoa. <laughs> that uh, would be something resolution wouldn't be very good but well yeah, it's kind of kind of worth the try would you do that would you take three of them string them together and put them on the front of your house and then program things for you know what i i would because okay. yeah. i think a lot of people in the neighborhood know i'm i'm the tech person so you know people uh-huh. would drive by and be like yep that's yeah. what she did. So. Yeah. Well, and Bob says, oh, no, <laughs> Jim's about to discover permanently mounted <laughs> multicolored LED scripts. Yeah, that's kind of what this is, right? You could you could put those out there all year long and uh, and then program them for Fourth of July. Well, OK, these are U.S. holidays, but Fourth yeah. of July, uh, you know, uh, Easter and, you know, the various Halloween, like you talked about Halloween, Thanksgiving yeah. for us. You well, not not to turn this into a Govi commercial, but they yeah. make um, permanent outdoor lights now, which I did review in the spring. Um, and they're strings of kind of little small LEDs. They're maybe two inches square and they're designed to be permanently installed sort of under the oh. eaves or under your soffits. They're fantastic. They're so bright. And just the way they're built, they reflect the light off the house and off the soffits. So it gives you a ton of reflective light and it really lights up the whole house. Mm. So if you are looking for something more permanent, <laughs> I, I can recommend those. I quite All like right. those as well. Re- retail on those? Usually what what am I going to be in if those I want Those were a bit more. I want to say, uh, I want to say closer to like 250 or 300, a set, but I don't maybe? remember. Okay. Because okay. you're, right. you're getting a lot more with them. I think the set that I got was like 100 feet or something. Okay. So okay. it was, it was pretty substantial, but, but We're, I can totally vouch for the, the kit, the setup, the app and, and how it looks in the end. It was awesome. Yeah. Definite yeah. holiday recommendation. govi has got a pretty good app. They've kind of come on over the last couple of years. They kind of started in, uh, in, a in, you know, doing thermostats and temperature mm-hmm. things and they got into lighting and they've done some kind of cool stuff. 
I didn't, I had no idea they were getting this, <laughs> this sophisticated with it. And a uh, couple curtains hanging off my deck. We have a big deck out front uh, faces the house. Mm, you never know. I'm not going to do it, but it sounds oh, fun. On, it sounds fun. Get Govi anyway. to sponsor your holiday episode or something. <laughs> that's what we'll I put need you in a little do. Clark Griswold yeah, outfit. And... That's, what, that's, what, that's really what I, I'd be the perfect, <laughs> be the perfect candidate for it. Aaron, we're a few minutes over. I want to talk about vacuums because I can't let you go. You got a few extra minutes. Are you okay? I to... sure do. Yes. Okay. I do. Let's talk about because you have reviewed. In fact, on your site, you have you have a link just for the vacuums that you've reviewed. And I guess the question, I'll throw that link for the if you go to techgadgetscanada.com slash categories slash vacuums. You should be able to remember that. Or the link will be in the show notes. You've, you've reviewed over the last couple of years, we always kind of joke, not really. And we talk about these. Ed Sullivan bought a vacuum cleaner because he yes. recommended it. Um, and all the work that you've done, like, is there one or two that really stand out for you that, that are keepers in all this? Yeah. Um, there's a couple actually that I can think of. I'll preface this by saying, I think robot vacuums went through a couple of phases. When they first came out, we were all so excited just to have a robot housekeeper that, mm -hmm. you know, even if they only picked up half the dirt, it was still better than us picking up all of the dirt. Yeah. So we were just wowed by the technology and then the technology improved and it got better and better. And then I think there was sort of this lull period where everything was kind of basic for a while and there weren't a whole lot of improvements. And then a couple of companies started the whole dual vacuum and mop thing. And the improvements were incremental and, you know, the mopping was in there, but it wasn't really great. But I think we're in a new phase, I would say, within about the last year and a half or so of robot floor cleaner technology, where they're actually getting freakishly good. Mm. So I've got a couple that I really, really like. Um, I'll call out the first one. Uh, I will say they've been a sponsor um, of my blog and the YouTube channel. So... You guys can take that for what it's worth, um, but they don't tell me what I have to say, what mm -hmm. I can't say, and they just send me the bot and say, you run it through your tests. So um, that's the Ecovax D-Bot X2 Omni. And it is a pricier robot, but you're getting a lot more with that than you are from your average floor cleaning bot, I would say. So you've got, let me think. You've got really strong suction power. I think the suction power on the Ecovax D-Bot X2 Omni is, uh, I think it's around 8,000 Pascals. It's like best in the industry for sure. I don't even know um, what you're saying. All of a sudden, <laughs> you're a bigger <laughs> vacuum geek than I am. <laughs> More suction, Jim. That's all oh, you need to know. More oh, suction. That's great. Uh, um, so great suction. Um, scrubbing mop. So it's not just dragging like a damp rag over your floor. It's actually scrubbing stains off the floor. Um, gosh, what else does it do? It empties itself. It refills the mopping tank. It washes the mopping pads. It dries the mopping pads so they don't get all musty mm. and nasty. Wow. wow. Um, when, when I started reviewing the X2 Omni, I was, you know, sort of making some notes about it as I was going through and testing and I'd test something. I'd be like, bam, oh my gosh, it does this. Bam. There's another thing that it does. And I actually had to make like a top 10 list of all of these kind of innovations and just really great things that it did. I was really, really impressed with it. So it's a fantastic floor cleaner. If you're looking for something that's going to do a lot of work for you and not be a lot of work for you, this is probably my top pick. And I'm not saying that just because they're a sponsor. I'm saying that because I told them I wasn't sending the vacuum back that I wanted <laughs> to keep it because yeah. it was that good. And, and I think it, it just works the best. So that's probably my top pick. Um, it is pricier. I think it's about $14.99 US. Um, but for everything it does, I mean, it's a lot. So you can certainly spend less, but you're not going to get as much. 
eleven sixty actually right now, twenty three percent off if you head sale. out. Black Friday. Is that a, is that a deal or what? <laughs> I'm not saying <laughs> add to cart immediately, but if if anybody is uh, is taking me seriously, this is huh. that's probably a really good time to do that. So eight thousand wow, PA suction, fifteen millimeter auto Pascals, mop yes. lift, Omni station with hot water mop washing, self emptying, hot air drying, auto refill, obstacle avoidance, and a camera on the thing, right? That you can and a camera. You, you can get in on your phone. I'm assuming and see where it's at. Yeah, it basically turns into a roving security camera. So you can go <laughs> peek in on your pets. If you want to check if the door is ajar, you can just, you get the app out and use it like a joystick and move it around your house. And yeah, so and you can, you can send it, assistant. you can send it somewhere. So you can be you like, can Hey, I need somewhere. to see this part of the house, go there. Yeah. And it's also got a really cool feature, which the previous model did have, but it still blows my mind. You can go to a spot in your house and I think they call it voice localization. So you can say, I don't want to say it too loud because it'll it'll yeah, come in here. Yeah, but start cleaning. Um, <laughs> okay, robot, come and clean this spot. Mm. And it'll be able to localize how far your voice is from where the robot is. So it'll come Stop. to where you are to clean that spot Stop. just by you asking. Does it really right? work? Does it, it really did. work? Yeah. Oh, so those things have so much promise. And then you do it and you're, and you're thinking, oh, it's going to come here. And it goes yeah. to the other room yeah. just because that's I mean, it's I not perfect. It. It's not yeah. like, it's not on my toes. Perfect. Right, but right. it can tell like, you know, the room I'm in that it knows yeah. that much. So yeah. 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 It's pretty, it, pretty cool. Can you, so you could say, Hey robot, come and clean this room and it would yes. make its way in and then start, start doing yeah. the, I, we, I'm I'm always because I really want to do this, but our floors just have so much stuff. We don't, I mean, we don't have a ton of square footage. We have a ton of stuff. And and it's like I'm just always afraid, like, I'm not gonna get the bang out of the buck that I want for this thing just because we don't have the square footage. And then mm. my daughter said to me one time, I think I've said this publicly, she said, Dad, the one thing you get exercise with and you're gonna turn it over to a robot. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I know. I know that hurtful. That's oh, hurtful. Right. Ooh. Sammy. And they, the audience loves Sammy, but you don't know how she hurts me behind the scenes here when we're, I think we're sh She's shaming, been on the podcast, shaming, hasn't she? shaming me for, mm. for not, you know, for not uh, vacuuming the house. We got some new carpet and it, it, it's a little thicker. I mean, it's not shag, yeah. but it's pretty close plush. and it's getting, yeah, it's plush. It's getting harder and harder. And I'm kind of wondering have you, with any of these ro robot vacuum cleaners, have you run them up against some really dense carpet to see how they do? Do they do okay in that scenario? Yeah. Um, okay. I've got a few fairly plush rugs in the house. Um, and and transitions, honestly, from floor to carpet or rugs can often be okay. a major hangup for robot vacuums. Um, the X2 handles it extremely well. Um, they're also... Robots are better nowadays, many of them at sort of, if they can't actually recognize and avoid the hazard, they're now better at sort of disentangling themselves. So you'll be able to see a lot of these robots that, you know, it'll roll over a cord, but then it realizes it's tangled itself up. So it'll actually start like shimmying itself back and forth yeah. and it'll back off and then spin around and try and disentangle itself. So they're, they're, they're getting freakishly smart i mean yeah, um yeah. i think irobot has has trained its roombas to avoid pet accidents oh yeah at least the <laughs> solid kind so those have gotten a lot of press right yes. yeah 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 well i always we, you always we always talk about these and i walk away kind of thinking should i and actually the basement here would be a perfect we have a little bit more yeah little harder floors li a little more it'd be kind of nice to get to clean this area from i i eat down and i especially i eat popcorn i put my feet up on the desk and eat popcorn <laughs> always little remnants of it left over so i should get one i probably i would probably be best in that three to five hundred dollar range for something in the yeah. basement right type deal that that's just vacuuming i don't need yeah. it to mop Right. There's um if the iRobot S9 Plus is on sale, okay. um I have that one 
down in our basement. Our basement is fully carpeted and I hate getting kind of in and around all the furniture and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. So it does a really good job because it's, it's a vacuum only. So that's all it's going to do, but it's got decent suction and excellent uh, navigation and obstacle avoidance. So I send it out three times a week to go do all the carpets in the basement and it does a fantastic job. And there's nothing more satisfying, Jim, than coming downstairs and seeing the little tracks in the carpet that it's been there and everything is tidy. And I just, I love it. I think, uh, I think that is uh five ninety nine right, right now. Oh, right now, there you go. 40% 40 off. off. Wow. Holy look at buckets. that. Save that fun. is, uh, that's right um, in your wheelhouse, Jim. Guess, guess I'm saving, guess I'm saving for that one. <laughs> um, Aaron, techedgescanada.com is your site. What, what are you looking forward to just as I, before I let you go, what are you looking forward to? You got anything you want to tease that's coming up that you might be excited about? I have five more robot vacuum reviews coming <laughs> out in the next two weeks. Your house must be super clean. <laughs> Like, do they fight each other? Do you ever like do robot bot fights with vacuum cleaners? I'm not going to lie. Awesome, I have, when I've been testing two at once, I'll send them out and, you know, they will yeah, bump, bump into, into each, each other. other. But I've got, <laughs> I've got two of iRobot's newest vacuums. I have the J5 Plus Combo, which is a new vacuum and mop. And the J9 Plus, which is, I think you would call it the more advanced version of the J5, which is also vacuum a mop. So looking forward to finishing those off and sharing the results. And I've got two other ones from Roborock. Roborock's another um, really great, solid vacuum brand, as far as I've found in my testing. Um, their Q Revo, which I recently reviewed is a really great vacuum. Um, and then I've got the S eight, S eight coming and the Q five plus from Robo. Wow. That's impressive that you can remember all those, all I those know. things. Nice work. It hurts my head sometimes, yeah, yeah, but no yeah, no, I, I don't know how I quite ended up reviewing all of the robot vacuums, yeah. but, um, it's, well, you've it's done fun. a lot. It's... And then eventually the vendors are like, hey, we got to get on her site. Like we need fair comparisons. Right. And so they they begin to it. I think some people think, wow, that'd be really cool to have all these things to test. But it's a lot of work. I mean, your reviews are pretty comprehensive. You, you have a video for each. You got a pros and cons. You've got a you've got a couple pages of comments on them and what they do. I mean, that's well written yeah. and very well done. Thank so you. it can kind of, you can kind of get though, after a while, you can kind of get a li little bitter around this, like not another, <laughs> not another vacuum, <laughs> right? It, uh, the expectations do increase. There, there was something I reviewed fairly recently and I just thought it, it didn't get a great review and I had to sort of check myself and say, is, is, am I not? enjoying this experience because I know too much and my yeah. expectations are so high or is it because it's really not a good product? Yeah. So yeah. I think, I think the reason that brands are willing to, to work with me and to, to have me review their product is that I try to be really fair. So I put all the vacuums through the same tests Um so, you know, there's no favoritism or fair play. Mm -hmm. um, and I just try and really balance the pros and the cons. So something that I might find a downside might not be to someone else. So I just try and put on my old journalist hat and really just provide a balanced view for folks that, that you know, lets them make their own decision. I'm yeah. more than happy to say, in my opinion and my recommendation, yes, you should buy this or no, you should not. But I'm more than aware that people have their own reasons for making their decision. So I just like to give folks enough information to arm them to shop smart and not waste their money. And yeah. that's that's kind of what I'm in it for. Well, and your videos are top quality. I like them every chance I get on both Facebook or both on Twitter and in uh, in YouTube. You and do. Uh, you just you've do been a great supporter you, of the channel. You do a great job of that. And, and so they're fun to watch. And you just do a nice, you just do a great job um, with it. Thanks, Jim. I would, before I let you go, I'd be, I, they would, they would come after me if I didn't ask you this question, Black Friday. Like it's, 
this we're in prime black Friday. In fact, I won't be doing a podcast next week because it's Thanksgiving here in the U S right. Um, you got any, you got your eyes on anything? Like, are you, what, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm always looking for anything. And <laughs> yeah. because I do buy a lot of the tech that I review, if I can get it on sale, I will. Um, I'll probably pick up a few Bluetooth speakers to review, um, probably some headphones. Um, what else? I would say like if folks out there are shopping and just wondering, you know, what's a good thing to buy right about now, um, a lot of home security stuff tends to go on sale if past experience is any indication. So if you have like the ring ecosystem, which is what I use at home, um, it's my preferred system. Um, and I've seen those, they're already on sale, like 30 and 40% off yeah. for some of yeah. their devices. Yep. Yep. So, um, if you're looking for anything like that, that's smart. Headphones and speakers do tend to get marked down really steeply at this time of year. So if that's something you're looking for, for either yourself or as a gift, um, this is a really good time for that as well. Yeah. And Oh, anything top three. What would I recommend for people for Christmas? Well, you said, Gotta get, I, I think you said headphones, like this is the time to yeah. buy them, right? What else? Headphones think? and speakers. Um, definitely smart lights. Yeah. I, I think yeah. everybody knows I'm pretty obsessed with smart lighting. So, um, Govi stuff I have actually noticed is, is on sale quite a bit. And I mean, if you, if you can swing it, if you've got the budget for it, a robot vacuum, it's it, we've we've talked about this before, Jim. It's the kind of thing where you're like, eh, I don't know, should I buy it? Will I mm -hmm. use it? Mm -hmm. If you buy one and you schedule it, you don't even have to worry about if you're going to use it or not. It's just going to do the job for mm -hmm. you. And mm -hmm. then, like me, you come down the stairs to the carpeted area and you can see the tracks, and you're like, thank you, robot. I don't have to vacuum today. <laughs> and it says you're welcome in a creepy kind of way. <laughs> yep. Right. Right. Well, Aaron, thank you for coming on and thanks for being such a great guest and thanks for just your partnership in the podcast. It's always great to have you on about once a quarter and to catch up with you. I finally got the scheduling right where we got you on right before Black Friday. seems yeah. like the last couple of years we've missed that, but but thanks for all that you do and and good luck with all the, you know, I know you're you're really doing a lot of great stuff out there. And so we'd encourage everyone to head out techgadgetscanada.com. And, uh, and get your reviews from there, get on YouTube and like some of those videos. I mean, all those things, all those things help. So Aaron, they help thanks. me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, yeah. learn from and enjoy. Yeah. You say that like you've said it a few times on YouTube <laughs> before. <laughs> Maybe right? once or twice. Once once or twice at work. I always say it hit like and subscribe because I'm contractually obligated with YouTube to say that now. <laughs> you know right. what I have to say. It. Aaron, thanks a ton. Have a, a, a great, uh, have a very, very Merry Christmas. We probably won't see you before then, but have a very, very, which kind of sounds weird, but it's coming up fast. I know. Like, I can't believe it. Just a couple weeks away. You guys already did I Thanksgiving, hope, right? Your Thanksgiving. Is we did. October. Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. So, so we've Christmas already had Turkey. So enjoy yours. Enjoy your holiday season. Thank and you. and Thank I hope you. your audience has a really great holiday season as well. I always love coming on because they're so engaged and, you know, so interested in the topics and have so much to offer in the comments as yeah, well. They're pretty, so they're, they're thanks pretty to great. your audience. So too. John, on the way, I'll send you out with this. John says, no recommendations from team. <laughs> <laughs> check me, check me next spring, John. We'll see. Oh, Aaron, I'll wrap up the show. I'll let you go. Have a, have a great evening. Tell Roger, thank you for lending you to us for the evening. And, and I know he, he got out so you could do the podcast. So thank you. Betcha. That. Appreciate it. All right. Great take night. Care. Thanks again. Thanks, Jim. Aaron. See you soon. Take care. Have a good one. All right, guys, uh, as we think about the, uh, as we think about wrapping this up for the evening, thanks for coming out. I know we went a little bit longer, but that's okay. Aaron's super fantastic. Big thanks to Aaron for coming on and for doing this. And by the way, she, one of the, one of the things we didn't cover, we had planned to cover. She's got a, and I'll put the post in the show notes. She's got a post about using the ring doorbell. So, you know, if you buy the ring, then you can get a separate doorbell that does more than just when you push the button just a doorbell there. You can program that thing to do like holiday songs and some of those kinds of things. And so, um, uh, check that out on her site. It's a good one. I'll have the link. I'll have a link in the show notes if I was ready. Oh, maybe I have that up here in, uh, for our, let's see if I've got that. 
ready for our live audience. Chromebook review. Maybe I closed it out. Shoot. We'll uh, throw that in the show notes for the live show. Um, so for those coming live, thanks for coming out. Next week, no live show. It's Thanksgiving here in the United States. And uh, and so I'll be taking Thursday night off. Traditionally, we would have come back with a show with Sammy on Friday. I should probably do that. Maybe I'll talk to her about it. Maybe we'll do a Friday show. Follow me on Twitter or whatever. I'll see if in the Discord group, theaverageguy.tv slash Discord, if you haven't joined that already, just to see. It would be good to catch up with her. And I forgot that we kind of do those those uh, Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving. We kind of do those, or at least we have done those Friday shows. Not every year, uh, but we've done some as well. Uh, Tony, I see on my watch that you're tweeting out there. Let me like that. Make sure. Uh, that we're doing that. So, th- so Tony, thanks for doing that. Um, yeah. So off next week, and then we have a show. I've got uh, I've got a special guest. Hopefully, he will show up here. I got a special guest uh, for the week of the thirtieth, and then actually uh, February seventh marks thirteen years of Home Gadget Geeks, which is crazy. Thirteen years. Like that's it's amazing to me. For the nine of you who've hung around live, thanks for, for hanging out tonight. But, you know, you think, I don't know, because surgery is scheduled for February, I'm sorry, for December 4th. I don't know where I'll be on the, on the, uh, on the 7th. It seems a little close. And um, so I'm just not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure where I'll be yet with that. So we'll play that by ear. Might be an update. Maybe we'll get Sammy on, do a health update. I have to see how I feel. So. Um, let's play the seventh by ear. Uh, and then actually, uh, the 21st, I got TJ Huddleston, uh, coming from hometech.fm. If you know, Gavin Campbell, uh, Gavin and TJ, uh, podcast together, the 28th were off. I've got Christian rescheduled to come back on the 11th to talk about an update on bit warden and, uh, and last pass. I, we got a request from somebody in the chat room or in the uh, discord group to do that. Or maybe it was email. I can't remember. Said, hey, could you could you update us on that? So Christian's going to come back in January. And then on the 25th, Bob and Ryan are going to come back and do a post-CES episode. So they're going out there. They're going to be hanging out out there. You don't have to go. They'll have a summary of all the great stuff that they saw there, at least gadget reviews. They know the deal. You know them. You know. They're they're right in this in this space. So Bob and Ryan will be coming on on the 25th. So we got some good shows coming up that gets us through. Let's see, 92, 93, 94, 95. We're not quite to 600 yet. We're getting pretty close. We'll get a few more scheduled in there as well. We are live every Thursday, 8 PM central nine Eastern. Oh, I should say big thanks to Christian. I mentioned him, but big thanks to Christian been a big sponsor of the show from the very beginning web hosting and media hosting for, for this show. And of course he does it at maplegrovepartners.com. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting from people that you know and you trust. And you know that's Christian. Check it out. If you need some hosting, why would you use anybody else? Just go to Christian. He's going to take good care of you. Maplegrovepartners.com. John, uh, <laughs> uh, John says, let Sammy host while you vacuum. And um, that's <laughs> maybe... Maybe not a bad idea. Ask her some questions. She just came in. She always comes in at eight. She works on Thursdays till eight. So it'd be good to do it on Friday. She'll be off that weekend anyways, uh, coming up. So then Brian says, thanks. Excellent show and happy Thanksgiving to all. For those of you in the United States who will celebrate Thanksgiving on Thursday, hopefully you're listening to this maybe right before it. Have a great Thanksgiving. I hope, however, whatever traditions, we just picked up an 18 pound turkey and the last year we did the grill and the smoker. I did a 12 or 13 pounder on the grill and we did a 12 or 13 pounder on the, on the smoker and the family overwhelmingly voted for the grill. I did not, I didn't see that coming. I thought the smoker would win. Not going to happen. So what's going to happen for us, bought an 18 pounder that's going on the grill early, early in the morning. We'll eat around three beef jerky going on the smoker in the morning with it and we'll have both turkey then for the cocktails and maybe some cigars and a fire 
we'll have the beef jerky. So that's what's going on at the Colin the Collinson House. Sounds pretty great, right? I think so. That sounds pretty great. I'm pretty excited about it. All the kids will be over. Uh, John says good night, and I'm and uh, and I'll say good night as well. Again, don't forget we are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, on here at the Average Guy slash Live. Love to have you out here as well. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for staying around. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And with that, we'll say goodbye, everybody.